Okay, so an object is kept, when, when spun around a circle, an object is kept going in towards the circle. going in this direction using centripetal force. And to calculate centripetal force, it's still mass times acceleration, but it's the acceleration that of the object moving around the circle. Okay, so that's how fast it accelerates. So basically, if I were to take a uh, tennis ball and put it on the end of a rope and spin it around in a circle, okay, the rope acts as the centripetal force, it's the tension force. All right. Now, if I spin it around on the ground, there's no other forces that act on it other than that centripetal force. So sometimes what we have to do is we are going to um, use three different equations for this, to find that centripetal force. Okay. Now, we know that acceleration... Basically what I'm going to do, flip to page 180, let's look at the three equations. <coughs> these three equations are for centripetal force. Again, you're given these equations, and you're going to use the one that you, that you, that you have the information for. Okay? So if I change acceleration... I can change it to v squared over r, in which v is the velocity that's moving around the circle, and r is the radius of the circle itself. Okay? So, the long and short of it is, when I look at velocity moving around a circle, the distance is calculated using the radius, and then use circumference of a circle, and we end up with v squared over r, okay? The second one is four pi squared m radius over time. Again, all of these are just using circumference, so if you're giving time, that's actually time squared, if you're given the amount of time it takes to go around the circle, I can use this equation here. You will be always given mass in all of these equations, and you'll be given the radius. Now, in this one, I'm giving you the velocity that's moving around the circle. In this one, I'm giving you the amount of time it takes to get around the circle. And then the third one is frequency squared. Okay? Now, we haven't talked about what frequency is, so we're going to do that a little bit right now. We spend time on this in waves. But frequency is what we refer to as cycles per second. Okay? So the number of times something occurs in one second, that's what frequency is. Period. Those in grid 12, you know what period is? It's how long, how long does it take for something to go back and do it and get back to where it started? Okay? But period is 1 over the frequency. So, in other words, it's the reciprocal of frequency. So, how many seconds does it take to complete one cycle? All right, how many seconds does it take to complete one cycle? Well, look at the second hand on a clock. How long does it take for the second hand on a clock to go once around it? Seconds. In seconds, dude. 60 seconds. So it's 60 seconds to complete one cycle, right? That would be your period. Your frequency is it would complete 1 60th of a cycle every second. Okay, so depending on what you're given. If I'm given frequency, I use this guy. If I'm given period, I use that guy. It doesn't matter. And all it is is telling you how long it takes to go around the circle. How long it takes for the object to go around the circle. Okay? Now,
I'm going to look at sample problem one. And I want to talk to you a little bit about sample problem one. It's uh, sample problem two. A thousand kilogram car enters a level curve at 20 meters per second. So a thousand kg car enters a curve at 20 meters per second? Yeah. 20 meters per second. It's not going very fast. Okay. The curve has a radius of 80 meters. So it's going around the circle. Now, your velocity works in a perpendicular direction. So my radius is 80 meters, and the velocity it's traveling at is 20 meters per second. So it's going to go in this direction, but if, it ever, if we ever let go of the centripetal force of our motor, we go off at a right angle. Okay? What centripetal force must be supplied by friction to keep the car from skidding? Okay. So net force is equal to force applied minus my force of friction, right? Okay. Because it's moving at a constant velocity, what do I know about the net force? Zero. Therefore, my force applied is equal to my force of friction. In this case, I'm going to call my force applied centripetal force. So it must equal the force of friction. So if I can find out what the centripetal force is, I can therefore get my force of friction. So, what am I given? I'm given mass, velocity, and radius. So which one of those three would I use? Sure. So my velocity, my mass, 1,000, times my velocity squared over my radius of 80 meters. So 1,000 times 20 squared divided by 80 works out to, what is it? 5,000. 5,000 newtons of friction to prevent it from skidding. It said triple force, yeah. but it's equal to the question asking for the force of friction. So it's basically in the opposite direction. Okay? So the centripetal force works towards the middle of the circle. Force of friction is keeping it from sliding away from the center of the circle. It's working in the opposite direction. Alright, now. Most of you can drive a car. Some better than others. Say, eh, Sam? You are I think I am. All right. The one corner that I think about all the time, when we head out on the West Highway towards Yorkton, that first corner you go around. If you'll notice in that corner, that corner is banked. It's angled. All right. So what is the point of the angling of that corner? Why do they angle corners? Has anybody ever seen a NASCAR race? Mm -hmm. Put up your hand if you've seen a NASCAR race. Who has not seen a NASCAR race? I think I have seen one actually, yeah. No, it's just on TV. You've never seen a NASCAR race ever? Yes, I have. Then don't put your hand up. <laughs> Okay, so in NASCAR, if you actually see the race, every corner has a bank on it, all right? And it's steep enough that if you stood at the bottom of it, you could probably reach out and touch it. Like it's a significant slant on that road on their corners. Why? Because your force is going into the bank and out of the all right, and so what else am I help? What else is aiding me in, in uh, it not moving? What else is there that's aiding it in not moving? Gravity. Gravity, right? Because if you have your car moving around in that direction, I still have gravity as part of the force pulling it towards the towards the middle as well. 
I have centripetal force moving it in that direction as well. Okay? So the reason for it is if you look on a flat surface, the car might slide out. But the moment you bank it, it's tougher for the car to slide up the bank if you've got gravity helping you, right? And you've got the force pulling it towards the middle of the, of the turn itself. So let's have a look at this question on page 181. A thousand kilogram car travels around a frictionless bank curve having a radius of 80 meters. <coughs> the banking is 20 degrees to the horizontal. At what specif uh, specific speed must the car travel to maintain a constant radius? Okay, so basically what it wants you to do is keep it from sliding up. So now, this is a little bit more confusing, the way that they draw this. So we're going to try this a couple times to see if we can make it work and make it make sense to what you have already done. All right, we've already done the question in which the box slides down the ramp, right? So we're trying to utilize another force that's going to keep it from sliding up the ramp. All right, so they'll, I'll read the explanation they give, and then I'll try and work it the way that I think I would like to see it done. Um, well, let's do it like this. Let's start, let's draw our same picture. Okay, so what's the first force that we always draw in this picture? Gravity. Force of gravity. All right, so my incline is 20 degrees right here. So my force of gravity is working straight down. So my force of gravity is 1,000 times 9.8, right? So that's 9,800 newtons is my force of gravity working it down. What's another force that I have there? Normal force as well. Works up like this, so we draw it down here. So there's my normal force right there. To get my normal force, I take this 20 degrees right here. Take the cos of 20 degrees, and I times it by 9,800 newtons. And what do I end up with there? Take the cos of 9 times that. 9,208.98. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Okay. Now what else do I have on this? Okay, so we are going to now call this force here. That's our centripetal force. And how do we find the centripetal force? What is it? Sine 20 times 9800. Sine 20 times 9800, which is? 3,351.797. Very good. Thank you. So that's what my centripetal force is is equal to. So now that I have my centripetal force, okay, my force pulling it down and away from sliding up, 3,351.797 is equal to my mass, 1,000 V squared over my radius, in this case is 80 meters. Now you have to calculate your velocity. same question that we've done to this point. The only difference is we've just switched our terminology right there. Instead of the applied force, we're calling it the centripetal force. Okay? Yes, Mary. I don't need to send. Oh, 
Okay. And it's given to you. Yes. Any other questions, boy? We've already done these. Like I said, the only thing that I've switched is I don't call this applied now. I'm going to call it centripetal force. So is it always just our, what we would be finding for applied is just like centripetal force now? Yeah. And then we still have to subtract the force of friction from it? Yes. Sure? Well, your force of friction would be helping you in this case. You'd actually add the force of friction to it. Okay. So when would we use subtracting? You wouldn't. Ever? Not in this, because it's not sliding. You don't want it to slide down. It has to be, it has to stay here. Okay, so that's what's keeping it on its, the cards going in that direction. Okay, now, there's one other aspect to this, and that is, what happens if I take an object, and I spin the object vertically now? So if I'm spinning the object vertically, okay, so you have a rope, you have a ball at the end of the rope, and you're spinning it, okay? So... When I look at the net force, all right, first of all, the object is moving vertically, right? <coughs> so it's moving around the circle. You have your ball at this end right here. The force pulling it in, because we're talking about a rope, we're not calling it centripetal force, we're calling it tension. Okay? Because it's attached to a rope. The same way we do the elevator questions when they're attached to a cable. Your centripetal force is, or your sorry, your tension force is pulling it in from the outside of the circle. Now, we have to look at the net forces. And the net force up here and the net force down here are not the same. Okay? Because it's vertical, I also have to take what aspect of gravity into into it, right? So at the top of this guy, the net force. So I'm talking about the force pulling it towards the center. So the tension force is pulling it towards the center. Which way is the gravitational force pulling? Down. Also towards the center. So my tension and my force of gravity are added together at the top of this guy. At the bottom of it, though, the tension force is pulling it back to the center. Which way is the force of gravity working? Down. In the same direction as the tension force? No. In the opposite direction. So, when we are talking about the net force, this, and in this case it's the centripetal force, all right? So again, I'm just changing my terminology, I'm not changing how I approach things. So the centripetal force at the top of the circle is equal to the tension plus the force of gravity. The centripetal force at the bottom of the circle is equal to the tension minus the force of gravity. All right? So when you're solving this, Again, the book does this different. It adds positives and negatives to it. I think that if we look at the net force, what is the direction that we want it to go? Well, that's the tension direction towards the center of the circle. That's the centripetal force. That's my net force. At the top, gravity's working with it. It's pulling it towards the center. At the bottom, though, gravity's trying to pull it away from the center, and the tension's pulling it back to the middle. Okay? So again, I do this a little bit different than the, the book, but it's also consistent with what we have done so far. Okay? So that takes us to the end of the chapter. I want you to work through the review questions for the next two days, today and tomorrow. Um, this week is a Friday off, right? So maybe a test Thursday, but we'll see how this goes. Uh, yeah. Where are you guys going? We have that career fair. Oh, is it Friday? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, you got, doesn't change anything. Okay, just keep working.
Wait, test Wednesday? Yeah. No. Or you pray? No, I don't think you'll be ready yet. Well, I'm not here on Thursday, so. Okay. Well, you can test Wednesday then if you think you're ready. We'll talk. Okay. All right. Were there any problems on Friday? I wasn't here Friday, so were there any issues with any of the questions? Look back to Friday's work. Oh. Can we do number three on page? There's no page number, this page. The one with the. Always. Always. Five kg or three kg? No. All right, Morgan. What's going to move these two forces? Gravity. Okay. Which one is it? Which direction is the two going to move towards? Okay. Right. So you would agree with me that these two, when I let go of them, are going to go in that direction, correct? Yep. Right? So the force of gravity of this guy is going to be moving it. Yes? Mm -hmm. What's going to be holding it back? Mm, so three kilograms. What about it? What force? Is a three kilogram half that's going to hold it back. Gravity. Okay. So then I agree with you. That's going to pull it that way. So now I have this. Okay. So now I can get my acceleration. My acceleration is equal to the force of gravity of the five. I didn't divide by 8 at the end. What did you divide by? Uh, I did something completely different here. Okay. Some sort of goofy. Do you know why I did 8? Because it's the net mass. It's moving both the masses. Yeah. Okay. You okay now? Yeah. Um, I have the same question. Can you get the magnitude of the strength? Okay, let's look at this guy here. What are the two forces acting on? Force of tension and force of gravity. Okay. Which one's stronger? Gravity. See that, right? Keep your pen down. Watch. Okay. What's the mass of this guy? Five. What's its acceleration? 9.8. Oh, I see Okay. I could have also done it with the 3. What would be the difference if I used the 3? Attention is pulling in. Pardon me? Attention is pulling up. Yeah. Yes. Okay.
watch this question, please. this question because this question can be done without mass so we're going to we need to see how this works all right force applied is a sine of the angle what's the angle 20. sine 20 times that which is mass times acceleration of gravity okay this is cos 20 times the sine of, oh sorry, no, the sine of, cos 20 times the mass, acceleration of gravity. So far so good. Okay, so I'm not putting any numbers in yet. We know the acceleration of gravity is 9.8. We don't know the mass. We don't need to know the mass. So I want you to watch. My net force, what is moving this object? Supply. What's holding it back? Force of friction. All right. So my net force is mass times acceleration. My force applied is the sine of 20 times my mass times 9.8. My force of friction is cos 20, the normal force times the mass, times 9.8, times the coefficient of friction, which is 0.1. Okay, so 0.1 was given to us in the question as a coefficient of friction. So I have the cos of 20 times the mass times 9.8. This is my force applied. This is my normal force times my coefficient of friction. So when I solve for acceleration, I have to do what? Divide it by my mass. So you can do this question at all times without the mass. All right, you do not need the mass to do this question because it's going to cancel out in the end anyways. So you just take the sine 20 times 9.8, subtract the cos of 20 times 9.8 times 0.1, and that will give you your acceleration. Okay, that's question six on page 166. I'm surprised it took this long. So either some of you haven't got there yet, or some of you got there and walked your way through it. I first did count. You get it? You get it easier. How did you do it easier? For the gravity part, I just did like an acceleration triangle. So you just took the mass is out right now. So you went 9.8 is yeah. your mass, and then close. To, yeah, it's the same it's thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yes. It just seems easier. Right? Yeah, that's okay. Is that right? Okay. You good, Lex? Yeah. Okay, any other questions today? Yeah. Lexi. Uh, question For the record, question five, six, and seven on that page are test questions. On one fifty six. Mm-hmm. Question seven. Okay. A balloon is rising at a vertical velocity of 4.9 meters per second at the same time as drifting horizontally. Velocity 1.6 meters per second. A bottle is released from the balloon when it is 9.8 meters above the ground. Turn the time it takes to fall. Alright, so we are at 9.8 meters above the ground. 
The acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. What is velocity 1 in this question? Um, if you drop something, generally speaking, when I drop something, what is the initial velocity? Zero. All right, but what's happening in this question? The balloon's going which way? The balloon's rising. The balloon's rising. So is it going in the same direction that I'm dropping it or the opposite direction? Opposite. opposite. So what should be the velocity in this question then? So there's my starting point right there, negative 4.9 meters per second. Okay? So again, this is all kinematics equations. Delta D equals V1 delta T plus one half A delta T squared. 5.8 equals negative 4.9 T plus 4.9 T squared. That's one half times 9.8. All right, this is where grade 11 math comes in. How do I solve quadratic equations? What do I got to do? Factor. Factor if you can, but before I factor, what do I got to do? Equal to zero. Equal to zero. That's right. So I go zero is equal to 4.9t squared minus 4.9t plus, uh, sorry, minus 9.8. The first step in factoring. The greatest common factor. Is there a greatest common factor there? Um, 4.9. 4.9. So let's divide everything by 4.9. What do I get? T squared. Zero equals T squared, t squared minus T minus two. Okay. Now I factor that. Good. T T minus two plus one. Again, I'm going quickly because I feel like you should know this. T is equal to 2 and negative 1. Can I have a negative time? No. What's the answer to the question? How long does it take for the bottle to fall? Two seconds. If it takes two seconds to fall, what is the horizontal displacement of the bottle from the balloon? So you have dropped it. And it wants to know what the horizontal displacement from the balloon is. So how fast was it moving, the balloon moving sideways? 1.6 meters. So the velocity was 1.6 meters per second. The time was 2 seconds. How far from... Where you dropped it. Here's the first question. How far from where you dropped it did the bottle land? 3.2 meters. It would be 3.2 meters. But relative <coughs> to the balloon, where did it land? Well, I guess the balloon keeps moving. So now your balloon is moving sideways, your bottle is moving sideways. When it hits the ground, it will be directly below the balloon. So if your balloon is your frame of reference, the bottle landed right below it because they're both moving in the same speed for the same amount of time. So the answer to the question is zero meters. All right. If I ask you where was it from where it was released, you would say 3.2 meters. Okay. Those six or seven questions on 174 are important to you. You can know them. All right. If you have not got to your review, I strongly suggest you get going on it today. Page 197. Don't do the rest of them if you. I would go right to 197 right now.
and go through your view. That's where all your test questions are coming from, are those questions. Even if these 14 questions were kind of, I don't know, I attempted them last night and I was struggling with some of these. And some of these I checkmarked they were done right, and then some of these others I tried to drill them and okay. them So should I just go into review or? I would, yes. Okay. Not much time today. Get to work.